Hello guys, my name is Tom Antos and welcome to another video where I wanted to show you how to fix some of the problems I found with the Sony a6500 and this also will by the way apply to anyone who owns the a6300. So first off, I wanted to say that the Sony a6500 is a great camera, especially when you consider the price right now. Um, now, like any camera, it's not perfect. There are a few things that can get annoying about this camera. I, I actually came across six problems that really bugged me, but thankfully I was able to find a solution for all of them. So the first problem are the weak batteries. Uh, as great as the Sony a6500 is, one of its great features is also, you could say, a negative. Uh, the camera is very small, so it has to use these small Sony batteries, which don't last very long. Um, the reason why this camera uses these batteries uh, up so fast is also because uh, of some of the other great features uh, that require a, a lot of power. Features such as, you know, the beautiful 4K video, in-body image stabilization, uh, the great autofocus, touchscreen, and so on. Um, so to fix the problem with these weak batteries uh, is obvious, just buy more batteries. Uh, there's actually a lot of great batteries for, uh, for this camera that cost only a fraction of the original Sony batteries. Uh, and I personally have uh, at least 10 of these with me for a whole day of shooting. So I, I'm going to provide links for those cheap batteries that, that, that I use that work great. Uh, another solution is to use an external battery like I did in my custom do-it-yourself camera rig. Uh, if you want more info, then just check out my do-it-yourself $200 camera rig video. And a second problem is the bad LCD. Uh, the first solution for this uh, is actually free. Just use the EVF. Uh, it's uh, always visible in any light. And of course, sometimes you can't have your eye directly to the EVF. So uh, the next solution is uh, just to get a good monitor. Uh, there are great small monitors out there. Uh, one is the small HD focus uh, and get the Sony bundle. So you can also power the camera using the uh, bigger battery that also powers the monitor. Uh, this will solve the first also battery problem with the Sony a6500. Now, this solution is not cheap. It's uh, $599 at the time of this video. And uh, now another great monitor that is very actually similar to the small HD focus is the uh, monitor from Andy Cine. Uh, it's only $179, so way cheaper. And it has uh, a lot of the same functionality as the small HD focus. Now, the only really big difference is that it's not as bright, uh, but it's still great for, you know, working outside in sunlight. Uh, it actually comes with a sunshade and dummy battery, so you can also power your Sony a6500 using the monitor's battery. Uh, problem number three is that there's no in-camera time-lapse. Uh, in case you didn't know, Sony cameras don't actually come with any time-lapse options. Uh, they have an app that you can buy, but it costs uh, $10, and it's not even available in every country. So to fix this, it's actually uh, pretty easy and free. Uh, you can just install the free third-party time-lapse app, uh, now, info on how to install it and where to download it is actually on my website. Uh, and, and it's a simple app that works really great. Uh, it takes photos for you at different intervals, which you can set. Uh, plus, you can set how many shots you want to take. Uh, below that, it shows you uh, how long it, it's going to take to shoot this time lapse and also how long the final video will be based on the, the given frame rate, which you can also change. Uh, this app will not compile the photos into a movie for you, though, uh, which personally I would never actually recommend doing. Uh, it just takes a series of photos for, for you, and then later you can easily convert those uh, into a movie using pretty much any editing program these days. Uh, in the second menu of this app, you also get an option to shoot with the silent shutter, which I would recommend that you always do this uh, as it doesn't wear out the mechanical shutter. Number four problem with this camera is the rolling shutter. Now, if you've used the Sony a6500, then you know the rolling shutter distortion gets pretty bad in 4K video. Uh, HD, it's not nearly as big of a problem. Fortunately, you can actually easily fix this in Adobe Premiere. Uh, just apply the rolling shutter repair effect and then adjust the rate setting uh, to whatever you like. And that's it. And uh, now another problem I found with this camera is the overheating. Uh, I've had this camera overheat on me on, uh, several times actually, and the worst thing is that it would just shut off in the middle of a really important take. To improve this, the first thing you can do is, is to go to the setup menu, uh, card number two, and in the auto power off uh, temp settings, just change it from standard to high. Uh, this will essentially let your camera stay on longer despite the, the fact that it's getting hot. You will get a warning for longer before the camera actually shuts off, uh, which is better than having the camera just suddenly sh shut off on you. Now to really fix this overheating issue, I found the best thing to do is to keep the camera cool uh, by opening 
opening up the LCD on the back and moving it away from the camera's body. Uh, that lets the heat from the camera's body dissipate better, plus the LCD itself actually gets hot, so you definitely want to keep it away from the body. Uh, another thing I noticed is that whenever you are shooting in 4K on this camera, the processor inside uh, just heats up as it has to work extra hard. It also uh, pulls in more extra electricity in 4K, which causes the batteries to overheat and, and therefore die quicker. So if you get the dummy battery solution that I talked about earlier, it's going to help a lot. Also, if you get an external recorder, like an Atomos Ninja Inferno that I use, uh, then suddenly the camera doesn't have to work as hard to compress and, and to record all that 4K data. Uh, plus, you also get the benefit of recording in a better codec, and you get a nice big visible LCD display with HDR options, which is great uh, when recording in S-Log. So using the external recorder, uh, I was able to actually record uh, one really long take on this camera for over six hours, and I could have actually kept on recording uh, for much longer if I just had more space on my hard drive. Now, for more info on this setup, just watch my do-it-yourself $200 camera rig video. Now, the last problem that I found with this camera is the 30-minute video record limit, which can actually be easily disabled just using the Open Memories Tweak app, which is uh, free. The link and the how-to guide is actually provided on my website, so uh, just go install the app and then go to the Applications tab in the Camera menu, click on Applications list, and then select the Open Memories Tweak. Uh, under the Video tab, just to disable the record limit. Uh, another extra tip I'm going to throw in in this video is about the, uh, the best sort of camera settings for just general shooting with the Sony a6500 or again it's going to work with the a6300. Uh, this is a camera profile that looks great out of the camera, doesn't require any color grading uh, like S-Log for example, but also it's going to give you better dynamic range and colors than the standard camera profile. Uh, I create my custom profile by going into the first tab on the menu and then in page number 11 under picture profile, I take one of the profiles that I know I'm ne never going to actually use, like for example the picture profile 9, and I edit the settings. Uh, first I changed the gamma to cine 4, and then I changed the color mode to pro. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. If it was, please let me know in the comment section. Also click the like button and share it with others that might find it useful. Uh, and as always, if you want more videos like these, then subscribe and follow me on Facebook and Instagram. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.